first of all, I'm honored to be here today on this special day. And I'm going to have a speech dealing with data. I would not unnecessarily deal with the uh, topic of are data important or not and how important they are. We all know that one. I would more go for approach which relates to the uh, active process of finding data which are related to us and the society or in the environment where we live in. And that's quite important. Now I see here that the audience is pretty young and, well, at a certain age you think that data are boring <laughs> <laughs> and you want, don't want to deal with it too much math and unless you have a home assignment or something like that, you don't want to go through it. And I would say that when you are young, you go more in the process of generating data that other old people can use. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to stay like that. We are fastly changing toward new approaches, so let's try to have a different critical thinking on data. Uh, before I go further, I have to explain I'm not one of those data fanatics. I didn't study economics. I don't have a degree in economics. <laughs> I'm a software developer. And as most of us software developers do, we try to find things through curiosity. Like we get become curious in the activity that we do and we start reading something there, reading something there, and in that process we get happy because we learn something new every day. So uh, going back uh, a few years ago, well, that was the moment that I felt, wow, data is beautiful. I was working on a little task that was provided by my company that I was working as a software developer. And it was quite a simple task, it was a spreadsheet if I go by a commercial name, I would call it an Excel sheet. And basically, I had the, ta the, the job, the, the assignment to upload it on a, on a database and publish uh, within few clicks, make available that users get what they needed. This specific spreadsheet, I'm going too much details, but it's, uh, I have to explain it. Uh, this specific spreadsheet contained great final exams from, uh, you know, those maturity exams. Uh, second level education and there were 40,000 students running online and clicking a website, a public website from the Ministry of Education every moment and they turned that server down. So we had, as a, a private company, we took this uh, public information and we housed it in our servers and we provided a simple interface that with one click you enter the student's ID and you get his final grade or they get their final grade, that was the, the aim. The spreadsheet was quite simple. I don't want to take credit about doing the job because it's any, any software developer can do. And, but it contains some information that I found uh, quite interesting. There were the city, the district, and the name of the school and the grades. Of course, to hide the privacy, for privacy uh, concerns, there were also some kind of uh, student IDs. Now, first thing, when we relate to the world, we relate by our identity. We, say, we go like, okay, what? how does this one relate to me? And first thing you go like, okay, does my old high school still has its reputation? reputation? So I run another query and I found a table, quite simple one. My school is somewhere there, uh, not well positioned. But uh, there I saw that uh, quite easily you can point out which are the best education schools in Tirana, in my city, my old city. And getting more curious, you can go and plot the data into a graph and you get some more information which go okay, which are the best cities where you have the better education in Albania or in any other country if you have that information. And if you have a children, you would like them to study in Saranda, for example, which is pretty much in south, and you don't want them to study in Bulcis or Tropoi, for example. <laughs> now, the point is that uh, what really got me happy about it was that from a simple spreadsheet, and I, got a, uh, I read the notice a few days ago, like one of those quotes, which I don't know who wrote it right now, but it said, a picture is worth a thousand words, then a graph, now we go to the economist fanatics. A graph is worth a thousand spreadsheet rows. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is that we had something like a spreadsheet row, which was pretty raw data with no meaning or targeting only some specific student. Out of it, we can derive knowledge. And that's exactly where I start looking. Okay, now I can do this. I can look for data everywhere I go. And if you live in a city, a metropole like Tirana, <laughs> You might see pictures like this one, which are, well, you might find them in, on, on Flickr or anywhere under target urban life. Uh, when I saw something like this one, I saw, oh, okay, there's a lot of data here. And the data is exactly in these water deposits. And this data relates directly to me as a citizen of this city. I was starting to think now, okay, if I gather all these water deposits and the price that has been spent for these water deposits, 
does it make the investment for building a new water source in my city, for example? And I made some calculations, which are not official. And I realized that Tirana has, well, I found out that Tirana has at least 20,000 uh, buildings, which are over three floors. And a price for a deposit was around 100 euro. And water deposits per building were five. And if you remember the picture, which was just a few seconds ago, there were more than five, but I'm taking a minimalistic uh, approach. And I realized that the total investment that the citizen has made in this city was something like 10 million euro. And I wanted to argue, okay, is this money enough for creating a public investment? Okay. And unfortunately, it wasn't. But I, I asked some people and they said, well, okay, this amount of money, if it was well, uh, well allocated, it would solve the problem with the water. Because the problem with the current water in, in Tirana was uh, relating to the ability of filtering. There was limitation of filtering of the drinking water, and therefore they had to provide water on uh, separate schedule times in, uh, during the day. Uh, I'll bring another example, just in the same, uh, same approach. It, it deals with the electricity, electricity in our regions, which sometimes is, is missing. And that was pretty bad in the year 2000, at least in my country. And I realized, I asked a few days ago, and I realized that Albanians spend every year 5 million euro in alternative energy sources, meaning those uh, fuel generators or those um, battery inverters. And a few years ago, we had, at the company I was working still, we had to go through a discussion, should we hire a new developer, because the company needed some more uh, employers, and or should we buy an inverter? And of course, developer versus inverter, and inverter won. <laughs> well, we, we're a software developing company, we cannot do anything without electricity. But still, it's a problem of bad management from the government. Because 5 million euro a year, for 10 years that this problem is going on and still going, somehow it's being improved, that means that there were something like 15 million euro that could have been spent in hydropower plants, for example. And through them, all those problems would have been solved. It was just a problem of allocating the money and having, uh, well, having the citizens not spend the money out of their pockets, making them poorer, but have the government think for their citizens. And uh, it's also like you hire one more person, and we have to think critically here. You hire one more person, you provide money to one more family, and you decrease, you decrease a little bit that margin which goes employment rate and also poverty in many countries. So the problem is that these were ideas that I had, and I'm sure that many other people had, and many people would like to read these things in the media. I have to go a little bit through the media now, because media is that source, well, it's a medium, exactly the medium, where people get information. So information has to come from one place, from one person to another one. And we would like to hear more of these cases in the media, and unfortunately they are not there. There are not so many cases like that in the media. And I know this one because I was like glimpsing through the newspaper and looking for data. And until I went to the very last page, I didn't find any data at all. And on the last page I was at the sports section. And it's not only my, in, my, my perception that uh, information is missing in the media. I also read a report, a research report from a journalist from Kosovo called Gazim Mekuli. And uh, he went through some uh, research in the media field and he found out that medias in Kosovo, and I, I'm sure it's the same in all the Balkans, uh, in 71% of the cases are only targeting individuals. They are only discussing individuals. In 25% of the cases, 26% of the cases, they are discussing individuals and some topic, which go like, this guy did this thing, but the attention is to the guy. And only 3%, only 3 or 4%, 3 point something percent, goes to only topics. And when you think of, of, of how much information is missing through this approach, or how much you are leaving data outside of this approach, you go like, okay, something's wrong here. Because democracy as a system, works based on information. Whenever you want to read criticism about democracy, all you read is about information, like democracy won't work without information. And there is a problem with democracy, or there if there is a problem with democracy, it's because people are not well informed on their actions, on who they are voting for. And the good news is that data are out there. Every government, or at least every democratic government, has this law on the right of information, which says that any time you want, people can go up to an office 
and say, okay, I want data about this specific topic or this specific investment or this specific infrastructure. And they have to provide you with this data. And also, beside this approach, there's also the fact that many institutions publish data online, which very few people read. And normally those people who read them should transfer them to the media, and this one sometimes is missing or it's not well organized. And there we go to a new concept, which is open data now. And it's not a new concept, but it has been around for a couple of years now. And basically it means that people can gather data, can argue on data and publish other data. Which I found pretty fantastic. And going back to my background, software developer, one of those funny laws, like Murphy's law and so on, says, given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. Now, bugs here doesn't refer, well, bugs in software developing refers to unexpected failure, errors that you don't want on the runtime. And the concept is that if you have many people who are checking the code or checking, uh, controlling uh, what you are doing, then probably all the bugs will go away. And that's the same with open data. The concept is powerful because there are many eyes, many people who have access to this information and they can provide a better level of transparency. Transparency. Uh, and this is exactly what we are trying to do at our project Open Data Albania. We are taking all the information from uh, public institutions, wherever we find them, and we are putting them into a central repository. Now, I won't go into too much details there because there's so much, well, there's a couple of technology uh, approach there. We are also representing the data semantically and uh, we would like this data to also be used back by the institutions, and we will uh, approach that one as well. But what we are making is gathering all the data in one place, providing simple statistics, and pushing this, media, uh, this, public to the, this data to the media. And so far it has been good because we have done, well, we are still in the first phase, but we have done some tests and the media is really eager to get some data. So it's like a, a lack of initiative in many countries to publish data to the media. And we also hope that, uh, well, it's not only for the media, it's also for the community. And we also hope that community will also interact with this data and put data online. Now, what we want to do is we don't want to make things overcomplicated. We want to make simple graphic structures, simple visual structures that shows, okay, this is what's happening with your money. Because most of the time, the data that are shown there is like, uh, I also have, like, I consider myself an educated person. I have at least, I have a, a degree somewhere, and I can find my way in big cities as well. <laughs> but when I see the budget of my country going like this one, I go like, oh man, I, I don't understand anything there. So people want simple things see, in visual form that they see how things are changing, improving or not, with some comment which says, okay, this is, happen this is what's happening here and this is what's happening there. And this is what we are engaged at the moment, creating visual tools for uh, improving the, the way the people can retrieve this information from us. And uh, through these visual tools, we are also trying to experiment new, uh, new ideas. And for example, this is something I really like because it shows, well, it's exactly where does my money go. Every, well, all of us, when we pay taxes, unless we work on the black, uh, we also, well, when we get a salary, we have some taxes deducted, and these taxes go, depending on different countries, I think in Albania it's 18%, and Germany might be 40%, and so on. And out of these taxes, the government takes some money and does something. And I would love to see a political campaign based on similar facts. Because all they do is arguing with one another and never mention facts or never mention that, for example, if you are a social, uh, social party, you would more invest in helping others and this is what they are doing with the money or this is what they are planning to do with the money. And it looks like there's no difference between what any, any, any political force is doing anywhere or it doesn't look, well, the program, economic program doesn't look to have any importance for them because they don't publish it or they don't focus on it on debates on anything. It looks like the only program that they have sometimes is like, okay, we'll get the power. So uh, by publishing similar tools, we make people think, okay, you know what, this is where your money goes. And for example, for me, I'm pretty much concerned with culture there, which is, it's funny, it's, it's 2 million euro, it's 0.5%. And I would give my vote to any party who says, well, okay, I'm going to raise this one from 0.5%, I'm going to raise it to 1%, for example. Just enough so it has a respectful number, at least. <laughs> and maybe spend less, I don't know, on the defense. 
or maybe defense is not a good idea if you are in Balkan, but uh, still. Uh, so now, uh, I have to cut short because I see my time is running out. <laughs> the point is that what we are trying to do is uh, to gather data, uh, involve the community to work with this data, to analyze this data, to augment this data, to enhance them, and to bring them back to the community. So we can make better decisions and smarter decisions, and we can have a critical thinking. Because that's, that's what the future should be. We should be able to think critically about all that surrounds us and all that, uh, well, that influences our life. And, uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> this is pretty much the end. <laughs> If uh, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty enthusiastic about what we are doing there, and if I could leave you with an idea, it's exactly this one: we should try to find data everywhere and transform this data to knowledge, because uh, knowledge is a powerful, powerful thing, and out of knowledge you you derive ideas, and some of these ideas are worth spreading. Thank you very much. <laughs>